Last year, Alcatel shocked the world. Well, maybe saying shock the world is a bit overkill, but they did shock me with the Idol 3. I gave it a solid review and for the price, this was on my short list of phones to check out for anyone looking for a really nice phone for a really nice price. Alcatel is back with the Idol 4 S. This is Alcatel's most premium device to date and it also comes with a VR headset. Is it too good to be true? I'm Kevin the Tech Ninja and let's find out. This is the Alcatel Idol 4 S. This phone feels super premium in the hand and it has glass panels sandwiched between a metal housing. It borrows a lot of design cues from Samsung and also Huawei. Most notably, the fingerprint scanner on the back. The glass on the back has a bit more grip compared to the S7, but it does smudge a ton, just like the S7. I'm sure you'll see it a lot during this video because I can't wipe my phone off every two seconds. Regardless, even if it borrowed its design from the S7, the design of the phone still looks great and it screams premium in your hand. Alcatel teamed up with Incipio to make official cases for this device and with my review kit, I did receive a lot of cases. I'm not sure if this is Alcatel's way of saying this phone works better with a case because it's a bit slippery or because it's made of glass which could crack. Regardless, throw the case on, you're welcome. This phone is pretty comfortable to hold. It's a nice size at 5.5 inches and it doesn't feel so chunky as other phones. It's pretty svelte. The 1440p 5.5 inch AMOLED display is poppy. It does a great job with color reduplication, blacks, and the technology has come leaps and bounds over the past few years and it's no compromise on the Idol 4S. A very solid screen. It's not the best in the world, but it's very, very good. The front facing speakers blast loud and crisp audio towards your face and this makes playing games and listening to music really really nice. And these speakers are right on par it seems with the Nexus 6P. Here is a quick audio sample of what you could expect from these speakers. And one more thing, it actually has built-in EQ, so you can change the EQs depending on what you're listening to or what you're watching, which is nice. This device does have the beauty, sure, but what's inside? Inside you'll find three gigabytes of RAM, a Snapdragon 652, and Drino 510, and it also comes with 32 gigabytes on board with 25 gigabytes of that that is user accessible. Now it does have a micro SD card slot up to 512 gigabytes as well. Now this device is also juiced up by a 3000 milliamp battery. I did use this phone on T-Mobile and AT&T in the US and I had a solid signal and connection compared to my other unlocked phones and it did give me LTE speeds in most locations. Performance was solid on this device. It pretty much ran as expected with this hardware. The system runs Android without an issue and most apps run without any problems. You may see performance issues when doing some hardcore multitasking and you'll see some shuddering and a few moments of delays when bumping into a new app or sometimes even scrolling. It's not a huge deal for me and it does get amplified when you do compare it side by side to a flagship device, but by itself, performance is great. You'll really enjoy it if you do have it. Now I find myself playing Cube Zombie comfortably with this device because its form factor and the front facing speakers made it really nice for gaming and this is just a solid multimedia device. I find myself using this device more than some of my other phones because it has the front facing speakers and a um, very nice screen. Now to sweeten the pot, Idol 4S comes with a VR headset. Now I'm going to be 100% honest here. I don't use VR, I don't care about VR, but as a reviewer I did check it out with an open mind. The VR headset is made from plastic. It doesn't feel extremely high quality. Everything about it is plastic, but I did play it. I snapped the phone in, which is really nice. It held the phone well, and the high resolution display really makes for VR a very decent VR experience, but I'm not a VR aficionado, so I'm not gonna comment on how great it is, but I find myself using it, and it was okay. The menu system was not intuitive. Uh, I found myself taking the phone out of the actual headset to bounce between the menus a few times. The Idol 4S also rocks the Quick Charge 3.0, and it is very fast charging times you can boost your battery up to 100% really, really quickly. Now, Alcatel's secret weapon with this device is the boom key, which I've never seen on a device before. It's just a key made for you to program it. 
It has a lot of features that it can do. You can set it for a number of actions. I didn't find myself using it much, but when I did use it, it was for the camera. You could press and hold it when the display is off and it would open it up, unlock it, and then take a picture. Or when the camera's open, you can just tap that key to take a photo. Beyond that, and those actions, I felt it was a bit of a gimmick, but it was pretty nice and it was something I did use a lot with the camera. The fingerprint scanner is a nice addition to this device, although due to it being so flush to the body, it was hard to find easily. Also, it was just not as fast as other phones, to the point where if I want to unlock the device, I did it the old fashioned way a few times. The Idol 3 last year's camera wasn't great. It suffered from low light issues and also the application lacked a lot of useful features. The camera on Idol 4S is a 16 megapixel camera and sometimes it takes great photos and other times it takes horrible shots in the same conditions and I don't understand why. It's not an optics issue but it's more of a software thing. Also there is an included night mode but using it doesn't matter much as the images are still bad. The shutter is pretty slow and low light and that causes the image to be blurry and if we go down the rabbit hole it's blurry because of the lack of OIS. Software is pretty basic with a few shooting modes and there isn't anything in here that I found extremely useful but all the modes you'd expect to see on a camera you have them. So the modes is pretty much it is what it is. So it's a multi-tier issue I think with this camera and I don't think it could truly be fixed with just software. I mean the camera is passable and as I said you can produce some nice shots like this one here but the inconsistencies make it something that I don't want to use as my main camera. Overall the Idol 4S is a good phone but when you compare it to other phones in the same price bracket this phone was for $350 pre-order and $400 straight up and I really can't recommend this device over say a OnePlus 3 or even a Nexus 6P that's pretty cheap now. I mean it's a great improvement over a phone last year but when you charge 400 bucks for a phone the expectations are much much greater and sadly the Alcatel Idol 4S did not deliver to that level. As always guys, this is Kevin the Tech Ninja. If you like the video for real reviews, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Tell me what you want me to review, and I got some good stuff cooking for you guys. I'll talk to you folks later. Peace.